there's several issues here. You know, not just the fact that there's a small inner group of private banks owned by private families that have the vast majority of the world's wealth, or that they changed the rules in the mid-90s and then in 99, getting rid of the Glass-Steagall Act to where they could go from 10 to 1 fractional reserve banking. Private banks can loan out on average $10 for every dollar they have. Well, in the mid-90s, they went ahead and said, no, uh, we can loan out $100 for every $2 we have. And then in 99, they said, we can basically loan out unlimited. You can just do whatever you want, but only select banks. J.P. Morgan, uh, Chase, uh, Bank of America, uh, you know, just a few others, only four major banks that are actually owned by the families that also own the private stock in the Federal Reserve. Okay? Listen to me carefully, ladies and gentlemen. When you watch regular financial news, you read the financial publications, uh, you're going to be given limited information. Not so much that it's even a lie, it's just that they're lying by omission. Now, all that's changing now. You open up you know, Bloomberg, you open up the Wall Street Journal, and it's all about New World Order, One World Government, but, oh, it's what's going to save you. Now, remember, a lot of you have been listening for 12 or more years. You remember me saying they are going to engineer a collapse of the dollar, I mean, back in the late 90s, I was ranting and raving with Economist on about the derivatives bubble, which was tens of trillions then and could have completely bankrupted us. Now it's over a thousand trillion conservatively, and that's even in mainstream news. Mainstream news is saying uh, it's around 550 trillion in derivatives, uh, but the uh, high level economists, uh, you know, Nobel Prize winners, former heads of the Treasury, we interview. Uh, are saying no, it, it, it's it's well over one quadrillion or one thousand trillion, probably one and a half quadrillion, and uh, and, and and all the terms are wrong. They're telling the public that oh, it's a bailout. The big banks are in trouble. But Business Week Monday uh, had a headline uh, dealing with the fact that the credit card debt over a trillion of it's about to come due, and that's going to be. Up another big problem, but in that story that I covered on the weekday show at nauseum, they admitted right there. They uh, Business Week said, "Oh, actually, this this group of less than ten major international banks, four here in the U.S., uh, they're actually uh, flush in cash and liquidity, and this is really good for them. And they're and they control the federal regulators." You have this merger of government and, and banking, and they go out and they're grabbing smaller insurance companies, banks. Uh, a lot of which are actually solvent. So to put it in layman's terms, the private families cut off the money supply about a year and a half ago to corporations, the real economy, individuals. They issued this massive debt bubble by packaging uh, toxic securities and other things and issuing themselves unlimited liquidity. Now they terrorize the public and say, oh, the market's going down, oh, the economy's in trouble, there's a credit freeze on, a credit crisis because banks don't trust each other. And then the very banks that are working with Henry Paulson and others are given uh, well over a trillion dollars. And the news, by the way, now is admitting the bailout's $5 trillion. As we told you two weeks ago, just type in, uh, bailout now reaches $5 trillion. You'll see a bunch of mainstream news articles in the last three or four days. I told you, $5 trillion. $5 trillion's conservative. Some say it'll go above $10 trillion. Now, now understand, the whole GDP of the country is $3 trillion in a year. So, so what are these private banks doing? They're the solvent big central banks. They're the big boys. Other banks are just playing games compared to them. They own stock in the private Federal Reserve. They control the government. This isn't the government buying into the banks. This is the banks becoming the government. The government dumps trillions of dollars into them and then gets no voting shares in Bank of America, in Citigroup, in J.P. Morgan Chase, and then the fourth one, but, but it's kind of the, the weaker fourth, you know. It, 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 it's smaller compared to the others, but it's still in that class. Uh, and that's, um, of course, um, Wells Fargo. So they're taking over the government, not the government taking over them. You know, this has been called socialism. This is not socialism. This is called robbery. If the people were being taxed to then give this money back to the public, you know, helicopter Ben, Ben Bernanke, you know, said, I'll dump money out of helicopters. Well, he's not dumping money out of helicopters over your, your neighborhoods. He's dumping it over the Federal Reserve and a few private banks, and that's it. And so what are they doing? 
oh, it didn't unfreeze the markets, the banks need trillions more, they're still not loaning, they're still not talking to each other. But last Monday, seven days ago, they did meet with Henry Paulson behind closed doors, and the media said, oh, it's secret. And even CNBC, to their credit, said this is completely illegal. This is out of control. They're having secret meetings and not telling the public what's going on. And Henry Paulson is giving over $25 billion with Mr. Kashkari, his former VP, is the guy he appoints to hand out the trillion-plus bucks so far, and they're handing a bunch of it out to Goldman Sachs. And you've got Robert Rubin, who changed the rules in 95 and again 99, Bill Clinton's Treasury Secretary, and then Summers did the same thing, and their former Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs is the management group for the private Federal Reserve families. They're the brokerage firm that is handing this trillion plus. It's already over a trillion. They're talking about four trillion more to them. And then, the, and then they're going to take the money offshore. They're going to buy real assets with it. They're going to inflate that. They're going to leverage it out. They're going to do a leverage buyouts of companies in this depressed economy. So they depress the economy by shutting liquidity off. They then panic the Congress and the parliaments of Europe into giving them, what is it, $2.2 trillion in Europe so far, pumping into their coffers. <clears throat> and then, after they've done that, they continue to cut off liquidity and cash to, the, to Main Street. It completely goes into recession and then depression, and then they buy everything up for pennies on the dollar. But that isn't enough for them. In the short term, they can use the dollars and the euros while they still have some value, though they're massively devalued because of inflation, issuing too many of them. In the short term, they can buy everything up, but in the midterm, a year to two years, 25 to 30% compounded inflation. We're already at 50% a year. You know, they'll tell you, the government will tell you it's 6.5, but every mainline economist says, ah, it's more like 12 to 16. I'll, I'll just say 15. The point is, you're talking 25, 30% by next year, compounding year after year. And that's in Bloomberg today. The World Bank, you can go read it. ECB's noteworthy. You see global uh, tripolar currency system evolving. And it says right here that they're skeptical the U.S. dollar's centrality can be revived. And they go on to say, we see the dollar fully collapsing in the next few years. And so they say we need a new global currency system, but people still want to see the color of their money, you know, pink, blue, green, whatever it is, different parts of the world, brown. So we'll control it and control the issuance of it, controlling those nations fully, and then those banks will be paid interest for the right for the government to issue currency. So you pay your global taxes always indirectly to the private banks, the private intergroup, less than 10 worldwide, four in the U.S., but now you're going to be paying basically many more taxes, including a carbon tax and a Tobin currency trade tax that's so going to get into all sorts of uh, uh, different types of money transfers and stock transfers, not just the original Tobin. So they engineer the crisis. They offer the solution, which is a new world order. That's their words. I mean, Gordon Brown, Nicholas Sarkozy... All of them are calling, quote, new world order, global currency, global regulation by the banks, and they're the ones that engineered it all. And they are, by design, the banks want to bankrupt things. They're not free market. These corrupt banks, these central bankers, they engage in fraud. They want to implode economies so they can consolidate them and have management over them. And that's been stated over and over again. The international banks, that's why they fund socialism and communism. Those are systems that consolidate the population's wealth. When we come back, we'll take your phone calls and get more into this and how we can stop it. Stay with me.